Welcome back, everyone, to the program. Well, will the Igbo nation take the bait from uh, what the secretary to the government of the Federation says that Buhari coming back in 2019 is the shortest route of the Igbos to 2023 presidency? Well, that seems to be interesting. Well, there is another conversation that we, that we are having tonight, and the fact is that is uh, the president and the APC government, can they win in the face of uh, mounting pressure from a third force and the fact that the performance is not on the table for assessment, for Pastor Tunde Bakari? He feels this party and its government have performed woefully. But for Governor Nasir Arufa, he believes that confidently that they, they will win. Let's we guess now. Uh, from the Igbo presidency conversation to the performance of the APC. And let me begin with Mr. Adiba. Um, at his stance, what could have given a governor, Erufai, that kind of confidence that the party, APC, will cost home winning the 2019 election? Is that reasonable? Is that realistic? Well, you know, in my place, they said it, the, the, the vis visually challenged man has to be trusted something. He has his leg on the stone before he can boast and say, look, I will deal with you. So, I mean, I watched the interview with Governor Erufai, and he said, look, soon we are not just speaking out of speaking sake. He says we are, we are pulling. We have scientific evidence to show. And look, he might be making sense because, you see, there is a difference between the booze that you get on the social media and the discussion of the elites. You know, it's a difference between what happens at that level and the real level where people vote. Okay? Look, what I, I say this to people all the time, the poor people do not have big expectations. They just want to get on with their lives. You think uh, the president, look, Buhari, and, then, and his government has met those, some of those basic no, no, that's expectations? Not, that's not, the point I'm trying to make is that... Because they, they, a lot of people believe a narrative will change in 2019. Do you think so? I don't think so. I have not seen the evidence. Why I see a lot of discontent and dissatisfaction, you know, expressed by, by the elites, you don't get to see that, you know, with the ordinary people who constitute the, the heaviest bulk of voters in this country. And that is, you see, or let me tell you something. You don't just, a government, okay, no matter how bad it's performing, and no matter the abuses of its officials, okay, will not automatically just fall because it didn't perform well. That government needs to be discredited by a more powerful force, dangling a vision of the future that is attractive and preferable to what is on ground. And that is the job of the opposition. We are not saying that. Okay. So uh, it might just be, you know, thinking too ahead of, ahead of the race to say that, look, the president cannot be reelected. I mean, I'm not sure if you wait now. At about this time, before the 2015 election, the kind of atmosphere and the kind of feeling that we get from Nigerians and from voters is almost equating, almost balanced up in terms of uh, what people felt and how the rate they felt before they went to the poll. Your party doesn't seem that they're getting that kind of support from voters. Do you think your party can even win this 2019 election? I have no shred of doubt that we're going to coast to victory. Really? Yes, because... Maybe other people are not seeing what I'm saying, but I remember Ghani Faimi told us way back in the 90s, he said, if you can study a government and follow a government for 10, 15 years, you'll be able to predict what is going to happen. And we know. I'm surprised that Bakari is saying what he's saying, but he's at liberty to say what he wants to say. But if he claims that he's not seeing anything, then there's nothing anybody can do about it. But are you, I, hear, but I'm are you saying, hearing what Nigerians are saying? I also hear what other people are saying. Do you drive easily to the fuel station to buy fuel? Okay. Since he came in, two, in 215, we've never had anything anything to do. We've never had any well issue. For two and a half only, months now, only, only this, only this one. Issues with with fuel in Lagos, it's just that people think that life, you can move on in life without problems. Without problems. So if your wife cannot 
get pregnant, then he must, he must be president. If rain cannot fall, then he must be president. This president, I don't know how anybody said it, but have seen humongous, I'm using the humongous, the word humongous, so that we'll understand what I'm saying, humongous progress, that we may not feel the impacts immediately, but the foundation that is being laid will lead Nigeria to be a better country, where people will enjoy democracy. You agree that a lot of people are talking about suffering. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? I don't know about suffering. Government cannot share money. And if you talk, they say, because you are working in government. And I said, do you know my story? Do you know my story? Do you know how I came to this stage? If people go to school and get their fake certificates and they don't get a job, they blame the government. How many of these graduates that are supposed to provide jobs? No, 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 no. The, you, your, your government you will get jobs. No, 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 no. Your you government will... said that he was going to provide jobs. <laughs> Thousands of them every even, year. Even with the size of America, the greatest nation on earth, they still have millions of unemployed right. people. Let, let, so this thing is not, it's not, it's not, uh, uh, it didn't start today. Let, mm. there's, there's one issue that I want us to treat, and mm. the issue of restructuring, which was raised by the committee, uh, RFI committee. And uh, because you're a lawyer, Give us a sense of what you make of those recommendations made, uh, brought forward by that committee. Measure of state, state policing, the issues of uh, devolution of power. How, how do you feel about those recommendations? The ideas are brilliant, but here's a problem with the ideas. You are talking about amending the constitution of this country and to you know, amend it in such a fundamental way that it, it will impact everybody. You cannot just be doing this with getting some 8,000 people together. Or say you spoke to 8,000 people, mm. and based on what, on their responses, you, you made these recommendations. So look, there are recommendations. You, you understand, there are recommendations. But what I'm saying is that, look, this is, it should have gone more around to many Nigerians to look to at the it zones. Because, because these are fundamental issues. But beyond, then, beyond that, are, are those issues very germane? Look, they are germane. Are they reasonable? The way they in, fact, in fact, there were issues that the APC promised. Mm. Yeah. It, 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 they're part of the promises that mm. the party made to Nigerians. And why it took them so long to this point before making these recommendations is why some people are beginning to you know, impute political motive by saying, look, why, uh, they are all doing this for the 2019 I mean, election. But having said that, it is better late than never. All right. Mr. Because we need to close now, uh, Mr. Ibukwe, as it stands right now, Nigerians will be on your neck. That's a false promise your party made, restructuring this, this country. Be realistic and be truthful. Do you think that restructuring will happen before 2019? When we get to the bridge, we'll cross it. No, we already but at the I, bridge. I, I know why government had to take this decision. I mean, the, 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 those, the committees. We want to pull the rug from the, from the, from the feet of mischief makers who are saying that if you don't restructure there won't be anything like 219 elections yes we promise that and we're going to do it APC will talk Nigerians. Nigerians with performance or with politics with performance he didn't allow us to elaborate on the performance I would have told you so many things. We'll find some other time to drag you. <laughs> I would have told Mr. you so many Mr. things. Mr. Igbo Kwe, <laughs> it's always a pleasure talking to you. Uh, Igbo Presidency 2023, we'll still talk more about it. It might, it might be running. Is that a chance? Are you going to be running? 2023? Be running. I, I am qualified <laughs> to, 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 to go for the highest office in the land. It might be I have the experience. <laughs> I have been exposed. All right. To, we, we must go, Mr. Igbo. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Igbo Thank, thank you. you so much. <laughs> On that note, we say thank you so much, everyone, for being part of the show. That's the show for today. Michelle Akimale, bye-bye.